So Jet fans, we're going to talk about a few things today. RJF here, your Ayatollah, your savior and reasonable thinking. I don't think people are thinking all that reasonable, to be honest with you. Um, what is going on here? I don't think people are thinking all that reasonable these days. I think there's a, a problem here. Um, Zach Wilson stunk. I think everybody pretty much knows that. But there are still people blaming the offensive line. There's people blaming the play calling. You know what's really funny? The one common denominator of Zach Wilson, the offensive line, and the coaching is all tied to Joe Douglas. And you don't hear a fucking peep about that from the content providers. And you wonder why. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. I'm going to basically go through some uh, notes here um, of people who've actually responded to me on uh, YouTube who just, you know, it's like, wow, you just don't get it. First, number one is Buffalo Jets fan. I get on this guy all the time because he's wrong most of the time. Um, but he's got 10,000 um, subscribers. I don't. And it's a shame, a crying shame that I don't have that. And I'm hoping that if you're listening to this, you do subscribe. We're getting some heat. We're getting some good um, numbers on our um, on our shorts. But, you know, I guess it's just going to take some time. Buffalo Jet fan once said he would uh, like to extend Joe Douglas for 10 years. Could never come up with why. Um, someone challenged him to do a, a, a show with every draft pick, every free agent. He started to do it, then he stopped because he saw the light. He saw that this man just did not build a good team. Came in here with two, basically, objectives and screwed up on both of them, offensive line and quarterback. Now, folks, I suck at a lot of things, but I was right on with all this. Look at my look at my content way in the beginning. People that know me personally know that I was off of Zach Wilson when he was at BYU. This was a mistake. Joe Douglas fell in love thinking he was getting the next Patrick Mahomes. He didn't. Patrick Mahomes is a, is a once-in-a-lifetime, you know, millennial, you know, athlete. He was a three-star recruit at a shitty school who couldn't throw accurately. Somehow he figured it out because he's, um, his football IQ is off the charts. Zach Wilson's isn't. Um, so Buffalo Jet fan, who's, by the way, blocked me from, um, from um, commenting live. No one can read my comments, which is pretty fucking childish on his part. At least he had enough hair in his testicles uh, to basically do a show today that basically said, yeah, I may have been wrong about Joe Douglas, you know, blah, blah, blah. Jake Asman, on the other hand, this guy's got 32 fucking thousand um, subscribers. You go on to his website, Jake Asman, he basically works for ESPN. I've seen this guy in his room call me, you know, clown, call everybody a clown, put people in a shadow room if they don't agree with him. Um, I've seen him attack other people, you know, other, um, you know, sports, Chris Russo, um, somebody on ESPN. But the guy is a hypocrite, and I don't blame him. I would do the same thing. He lives in Houston, and he go, he um, has ties along on. His family lives there. He's a Jets fan. Um is very passionate and again i'm prefacing by saying i don't blame him i do the same fucking thing but he will not say a word about joe douglas you know why because he gets privileges when he comes over here going to the game if you bash the coach you bash the gm all of a sudden the front office and the uh the organization isn't going to be so kind to you he's a pussy though because he should at least he should at least say that same thing with michael k with the yankees michael k probably is in a different income bracket than jake asman but he's clearly not going to overly bash the uh, Steinbrenners and, um, you know, Aaron Boone, you know, so that goes to that. I want to read you what Jake Asman wrote back to me, because I basically said, hey, how come you don't say anything about uh, Joe Douglas? Um, here was his comment back to me, by the way. Uh, let, me, let, me read, let me read this back to you. You'll know where it stands. And you hear Jake Asman saying, it's a quarterback. Can't stand it. Blah, blah, blah. Bashing everything else. Here's his reply. To me, basically saying, hey, why don't you just say Joe Douglas needs to be fired? You'd never call him out. I don't want Joe Douglas to be fired, which is why I'm not calling for his job. It's not being a Joe D. truther. I just don't believe he should be fired. I was extremely critical of the backup quarterback plan all season and throughout the show. But if I don't think he should be fired, I'm not going to say it to appease you. He's a prick, basically. I, and, I, and I like him, but he's a prick. He gets on people. He, he this, is, this is kind of his personality. Um, but again... You're a hypocrite. You got 32,000 followers, and you're not being truthful. Um, at least, at least say it. At least say, "Hey, um, I can't be overly critical on Joe Douglas because I like going to Jet games." And you know, be, be cool if you said that. Um, let's see what else we got here, folks. Um, we got some tool named um, Billy SBC, who basically, you know, going back and forth with me, he's blaming the uh, the offense. He says. Really, what part of release time don't you get? I've read your post before and this one too. And in a second, we're getting the belt, so I might be able to go, you might be able to go hide behind the mom's skirt again, blah, blah, blah. But here was, here was a funny one. 
Um, he, he basically says, Zach Wilson has, has one of the better arms in the NFL. Zach Wilson is waiting for receivers to get open. There, there's, there's people who really do this. You know, I was watching American Idol and I thought the whole thing was rigged because some people really can't sing. Whoa. Some people really can't sing. And um, I'm like, wow. Um, they think they can sing. And this guy thinks he knows football. Even worse than this guy is um, um, somebody named Kiboros5308. Um, we were one catch. He wrote on. We were we were one catch away from tying the game. The OL was bad yesterday. No matter what we be able to replace them with, they struggle with that. Well, I mean, some of them need to find the English language, which would be which would be great. Um, makes no sense. Wasn't the offensive line, folks? When you have a shitty quarterback, and you know he might be great at everything else. Don't mean to get on Zach. Ninety nine point nine percent of us can't play quarterback in the NFL, or more than that. But defense the defensive coordinators basically are saying we dare you to throw the ball we're going to stack the line we're going to stack the box we're turning off your, your run game and we're blitzing you we're going to send more people than you can protect than you can than you can protect and if you can't show that you can basically get the ball out pretty quickly and find you know a man on man or an open receiver you know basically what's going to happen is what's been happening the offense can't move the ball and it, and it sucks i don't want to hear about how joe douglas by the way you know, drafted Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson, doesn't matter. They, they, they both can't do shit without a quarterback. All right. Here we go. Another person here. Uh, Dink Rumracker, 9545. The coaches are holding him back. The coaches are holding him back. Uh, we got um, this guy. This is, this is the worst one. This name, this guy named Uncle Rio 259. I'm a huge Zach, you know, Wilson supporter. Zach Wilson is developing slowly. I kind of tooled him on that. And then he writes to me, I hope when you struggle at something super important to you, you have people who care about you. He writes people who care about you enough to be patient, help you succeed rather than preaching. Then again, I imagine you are like most people and quit when things get hard and hopeless. Folks, if you're feeling bad for Zach Wilson, let me explain this to you. He's 24 years old. By the time his contract is up, he'll have made $35 million. Now, if you're 20 years old and I basically said to you, I'm going to pay you $200,000 a year for 40 years. You're going to be 20. You're going to be 60 when you retire. You'd be like, I'm signing up for that. By the time you retire at 60 years old, you would have made gross $8 million. Zach Wilson will make that in 17 games. It's a fact. Don't feel sorry for Zach Wilson. He's made generational money. He will be fine. He is just not an NFL quarterback. So this tool, Uncle Rio who's basically saying, you know, oh, you know, Zach Wilson's struggling. No, no, no. Zach Wilson will wake up a millionaire. You and I, you know, he will make more money than probably any 50 of us um, in here combined. That's, that's the bottom line. That's what Zach Wilson's going to be doing. Feel sorry. And like I said in the set chat, feel sorry for the poor schmuck out there who basically took his kids to the game yesterday, sat through the rain, sat through hours of traffic, sat through, you know, tailgating, um, spent two or $300 on food and souvenirs, then basically had all the traffic in the parking lot, then had all the traffic going home, then went back to his tiny home or, you know, whatever, then had to be up at six in the morning, go to work again. Zach Wilson did it. Zach Wilson woke up just fine. Millionaire. Feel a little bit bad for Garrett Wilson. Feel a little bit bad for Brees Hall. They may, they're, they're losing money by the second. They're on the phone with their agent saying, Hey, get me traded. I, I, I'm not going to make my next contract. So uh, uh, just a stupid remark from, from that person. Um, here we got somebody else. Some part of me wants to give him one more chance. This is from um, uh, Ryan Zuppard, E6242. Some part of me wants to give him one more chance against a team he has no history with. Can't make this shit up, folks. Oh, we got one other person here. John OI3ME. Mr. Rogers will return to one Jets drive soon. And he will correct the issue. He's just not a great player. He's a coach and a problem solver. Aaron Rodgers lives in my neck of the woods, folks. I don't know him personally. I know people who do know him. He's a polite guy. I've seen him around out and about over here. He goes to a, you know, kind of a, a coffee shop that I that I sometimes go to in that shopping center. Aaron Rodgers does not give a rat's ass about Zach Wilson. He doesn't hope anything bad for him. If he did, he'd be at the fucking games. <laughs> he'd be talking in his ear. He'd have a headset on. He hurt his leg, not his mouth. He does not give a shit. Aaron Rodgers gives a shit about Aaron Rodgers. Folks, that's the truth. He's not coming in here to save Zach Wilson. He came in here to continue playing football. He doesn't need the money. He could have just gone and, you know, just, you know, work for Fox. 
he wants to stick it to the Green Bay Packers. I'm sure he'll come back, but that doesn't give the Jets their generational quarterback. Okay, we'll get on a different show if Aaron Rodgers was or wasn't the right move, which, by the way, Joe Douglas had nothing to do with. Joe Douglas got bitch slapped, gave up $110 million in draft capital when no one else really wanted him or had the cap space to have him. Green Bay didn't want him. They're doing, they're doing just fine right now. Lastly, you know, I want to basically explain this to, um, to Jets fans, and there's a lot of you out there, with this whole bill of cheat, bill of cheat, bill of cheat. Folks, no one ever gets on Tom Brady because I guess he's too cool for deflating the ball or whatever. You ain't cheating, you ain't trying, folks. I, I, I'm sure every NFL team does something. Bill Belichick is arguably the best coach in football. Jets fans continuously calling this guy names is so fucking comical and is so grasping at straws, it's unbelievable. He took a group of players yesterday who were totally inferior to the Jets roster and basically controlled the game. He basically was willing to give up yards for time. He allowed, He basically was sending everybody after Zach Wilson, daring Zach Wilson to throw. The defense, once again, stayed on the field. Um, his quarterback did enough they could do. Sauce Gardner is not the same player as last year, by the way, folks. You know, he might have to go back to Ahmad because he ain't Sauce. Regardless, um, stop it with the Bill Belichick shit. If we had this coach last year, we'd be in the playoffs. Coaching matters. Look at Robert Salah. He's clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not good at his job. He's got 12 wins since he's been here. Joe Douglas has 21 wins, 48 losses. It's not good, folks. If that winning percentage was applied to baseball, they'd have the worst record of all time. The worst winning percentage of all time. Just think about that. Think about that for a little bit, everybody. So anyway, I'm begging you, folks. If you came across this, please subscribe to the channel. I am on this shit. Again, I suck at a lot of things, but I am, you know, just ahead of the game here in this in this football 101. I just basically see it before it's happening. Um, I, I saw this with the Jets. I never wanted to be wrong about something so much that I knew I was 100% correct about. And people will call me a Jets hater, hiding behind the mask. I've been, I've been called all of that. But I'm telling you, folks... I've got just a good feel on this Jets team. And I'm telling you, it is not a good team. It's got some good players. But, man, after Robert Salah, after he doesn't, you know, maybe he's doing something behind the scenes with the quarterback and saying something. But he, he he's shoving this kid down our throats. Now, it could be, you know, he's putting his leg out for Joe Douglas. Who's ultimately to blame? Again, Joe Douglas is the common denominator. And I don't want to hear the rookies of the year. And I'll leave you guys on this point. Kenneth Walker III was Rookie of the Year in any other year but this last year. They changed the voting. Kenneth Walker would have won because he had more first-place votes. Secondly, on, on Sauce, had a great rookie year. May have been the best player at his position. He was not more impactful than Hutchinson was for the Lions. To me, it's about who was more impactful for the team. I think Hutchinson's more disruptive while Sauce basically you know, covers one guy. That's my take on it. Not taking anything away from Sauce. And by the way, I was hoping they would take Garrett Wilson with um, the fourth pick. Um, I didn't think he'd last. I thought Atlanta would take him. So let's think Atlanta for having Garrett Wilson available. I think that guy is a special player. When you listen to him in interviews, he just reminds me of Keyshawn in a way of like, you know, he cares. I think he's. I think his upside is way higher than Keyshawn. And Keyshawn was a decent Jet, overall number one pick. But I, I, I feel bad for Garrett Wilson. This guy just has the potential to be great. Like Brees Hall, too. But you know something? You could be Barry Sanders, and if you've got a 9, 10, 11-man front, you're not getting through that. You're playing with elite athletes, folks. So it's not the play calling. The quarterback is the most important position. And when your quarterback can't process information quickly, when your quarterback holds on to the ball too long, when your quarterback is zoned in on one receiver, it hurts everybody else. If you put Zach Wilson next to Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, you're going to basically say, that guy, Zach Wilson, he's the superior athlete. Look at him, even in their primes. But what Tom Brady and Peyton Manning do is they get up to a line, they look around, and they assess the information. They know where they're going with the ball. And even if it doesn't work out, they can look up one, 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 in a fraction of a second. Zach Wilson can't do it. This game is too fast for him, folks. Again, please subscribe. You're welcome.